Hej. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I have to start clicking. I'll try. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Zineb El Razoui. I am a journalist in Charlie Hebdo. I am born in, was born in Morocco to a Moroccan father and French mother. And I grew up in Morocco, like every middle class Moroccan girl. And I joined Charlie Hebdo in 2011 as a freelancer, then I joined them as a permanent member of the team uh, in 2013. In 2013, I issued with uh, Sharb, uh, my friend and former director of Charlie Hebdo, uh, a two uh, volumes book about the life of Muhammad, La Vie de Mahomet. Um, I, I wrote the scenario and Sharb uh, made the drawings. Um, only from Islamic sources, I had nothing to add the life of the Prophet as Muslims um, say it, as they tell it in the traditional historic between brackets stories is extraordinary enough, there is nothing to add. And um, last 7 January, I was uh, in Morocco, in Casablanca, when uh, the two Kwashi brothers came to Charlie Hebdo. They came and uh, they killed uh, many of my colleagues. Here it's in the street Rue Nicolas Appert, in the heart of Paris. Uh, you see, uh, this is, I think, Sharif or Saeed Kwashi. And this is, here normally you have uh, the policeman Ahmed uh, Mrabat. And uh, I saw many comments on that, this photo saying, this is a terrorist and this is a Muslim. And um, a Muslim who died to, um, who was killed defending our freedom of speech as Charlie Hebdo team. Uh, this day, uh, all of these colleagues have been killed. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Bernard Maris, Uncle B, who was a columnist. This is Georges Walensky, one of the greatest, greatest cartoonists in the world. And he was a figure of the sexual liberation in France in the 70s. This is Jean Cabu, he was a big child, just drinking his tea and uh, with his uh, pens. This is all what he wants from this life. And this is Sharp, the director um, and co-author of the book I've told you about. This is uh, Frédéric Boisseau, the housekeeper. Actually, I don't know him. Uh, he was working as a housekeeper uh, for cleaning the building. It was his day, first day working, and I think he didn't even know that Charlie Hebdo was that, in that building. This is uh, Franck Brinsolaro. He was uh, Sharp's bodyguard because Sharp was threatened and he has a contract on his head uh, from Al Qaeda, but actually they only gave uh, $250,000, uh, so it was not, we, we preferred to keep him. Uh, so, Frank was killed also. This is Mustafa Urad. He was uh, the guy who, who was learning us how to speak French correctly and who corrected our, our mistakes. And Mustafa was only French since two months before to be killed. And he had only obtained the French citizenship two months before to be killed. But he was working in Charlie Hebdo since 20 years. And this is Elsa, the only woman who have been killed. She was a psychoanalyst, Elsa Kayat. Uh, yeah, and they killed her um, with a bullet in, behind her head. Uh, this is Ahmed Mrabet, the policeman who was killed in the street. You have seen his body. And this is Michel Renault. Actually, Michel Renault is not one of my colleagues. Um, he was a friend of Jean Cabu, and he came to Charlie Hebdo for, for the first time in his life this day. Uh, in order to talk with Jean about organizing a festival in a Clermont-Ferrand, a small city in France. This is Philippe Honoré. He was really a great, great artist and uh, really someone very nice. And this is uh, Tinius, uh, one of my favorite cartoonists um, in the world. And also uh, Raima, who spoke uh, before me, told me he was one of her friends. So all of those innocent people 
uh, have been killed. And uh, some people said that we deserve it. We deserve it because we provocate, because we do small drawings. So I, I say, okay, let's say we deserve it as Charlie Hebdo, but what about Ahmed? What about uh, Frédéric Boisseau? What about Franck? What about Michel? They, was not, they were not journalists in Charlie Hebdo. They have never written a single sentence in this newspaper, but they have been killed also. They, they deserve it also. I was in Casablanca when I heard about that, and I left uh, Morocco immediately and went back to Paris uh, to contribute to the survivor's issue with my colleagues. This survivor's issue, I don't remember if I have uh, the photo. Yeah, after, after the attacks, you had uh, a huge demonstration in Paris. This is Place de la République, where people gathered spontaneously the 7th January, and then two days later, four million people demonstrated in France saying, Je suis Charlie. Either they agreed with our editorial line or no. Saying, Je suis Charlie, is saying, I don't, uh, I don't agree with what happened, and I, I don't agree with killing people who were only using their pen. In this survivor's issue, my colleague Luz, uh, Renald Luzier, uh, made a cover with a a very nice Muhammad prophet with a tear in his eye saying, uh, Je suis Charlie, and all is forgiven. Because actually we felt that we need really to forgive the Kwashi brothers for what they have done. And uh, we, we wish that they were still alive and that our colleagues were still alive and they just could discuss with, him, with them, dialogue with them and ask them, why guys, why, why have you done that? Um, when I contribute, I contributed to the survivors' issue, and I also spoke to some Arab medias. Uh, this is, uh, in this photo, this is me uh, talking to a German, uh, to the German channel, Deutsche Welle, in Arabic uh, language, from Paris. And actually, this was a content shared in Twitter uh, with a hashtag. What you see in green is written in Arabic, and it means the duty to kill Zineb El Ghazwi to avenge the Prophet. And the black, uh, the, the black characters are Urdu. And uh, someone translated to me and told me it means something like, this is the bitch working for Charlie Hebdo. Uh, we need to kill her. Uh, actually, uh, I started receiving death threats uh, the 18th January. It was the date where we issued the survivor, uh, survivor's issue. The first death threat was a letter from ISIS state targeting me directly and telling me, uh, you survived by miracle, uh, the glorious attack of Paris where your brothers in atheism, the journalists of Charlie Hebdo, have been killed because you were uh, in vacation in Morocco. But uh, we, uh, if our lions, they mean the Kwashi brothers, if our lions were martyrs, we still have another, many other lions who have an eye on you. And we swear to you that we will not close our eyes before we separate your head from your body. There was uh, also a video published on YouTube uh, by a group calling itself Anonymous Islamic Youth, um, saying that Islam is a religion of peace and love, blah, blah, but the Sharia is clear. Those who insult the prophet, I just say I insulted no one, uh, must be killed. So Zineb al we we tell you, you are condemned to death soon. And a few weeks later, uh, the most violent, actually, threats campaign started with those two hashtags on Twitter. This is one of them, and uh, the duty to kill Zineb al to avenge the prophet. And the other hashtag was, locate Zineb El Ghazwi to uh, kill her. Uh, it was shared more than 7,500 times on Twitter by dozens and dozens of ISIS profiles. Um, they gave the precise way how to execute me. If you don't have a bullet or a bomb, just isolate me, break my head with big stones, uh, cut my throat or burn me or at least burn my house. They also uh, revealed uh, the address where my husband's work, uh, my husband works in Casablanca in Morocco, and his photos saying that only an apostate could marry an apostate. 
so uh, he was obliged to leave his work uh, because uh, one of his colleagues in Morocco was involved in this campaign, actually. So he didn't feel safe at all. And anyway, I cannot go back and settle, uh, settle down in Morocco because I live under heavy uh, uh, security protection in France and I am not protected in Morocco, a country that I, have to, I had to leave a few years before uh, where I was working as a journalist and I left also because I had problems with the Moroccan uh, dictatorship, I should say. So those hashtags were removed a few days after by Twitter, but for me, my life was already destroyed. So um, why, why me? I am not a cartoonist. I didn't draw Muhammad. Uh, other colleagues in Charlie Hebdo didn't receive such threats. Uh, only Luz, who have drawn uh, the cover of the survivor's issue, has the same security staff as me. So why me? Why me? Because uh, maybe I have written that book with Shab, but other people wrote uh, books on Muhammad, uh, and they didn't have the same threats, especially when they respect what the Sharia books, what the Sharia sources say. So I think that the answer uh, may be in three um, points. Maybe because I am uh, Arab, I am French, but I am also Moroccan, I speak Arabic, so maybe the most... Uh, the most radical among Muslims, they are not used to hear a certain sort of speech of freedom in Arabic, in their language. And actually, I should say that I was teaching uh, Arabic in the French University in Cairo. So I think I speak Arabic better than the Kwashi brothers and better than um, many people who join ISIS uh, state. Uh, I also, um, I was um, schooled in Islamic scriptures and history. Uh, I am um, a sociologist of religions. So when I discuss with a, with a when I talk, when I dialogue, um, as long as they can dialogue, when I dialogue with a radical Muslim, he cannot say anything to me. I know what I am speaking about. I know the sources. I know the Quran. I had it as a compulsory teaching in Morocco during 16 years of my life, and I continued to study it by my own choice in the university. So I know what I am speaking about. And the third point is that I am a woman. And this is uh, also very, this is something unbearable for them. I am a woman, I'm not veiled, I'm free, I smoke, I drink my glass of wine when I want, I work in Charlie Hebdo, and uh, I assume all that. So, and I speak in the media. So, you know, when you are in my position, you are between two fires, because some people in France consider you as a home Arab, and uh, some people from the Arab countries say, oh, she betrayed her, um, I don't know what I betrayed, because I never betrayed my values, but they consider that I kind of betrayed my people or something like that. So there is a combination of those three factors, uh, but there is um, also um, the fact that uh, today, um, people like me, I mean, did you notice that very often people who have a contract on their head come from the Muslim culture? There is several examples. Uh, Salman Rushdie, uh, Taslima Nasreen, Nawal Sadawi, the Egyptian feminist, Algerian writer Kamal Daoud, Walid al Husseini, Palestinian blogger. Uh, Sheikh Wildl Mkhaytir, Mauritanian blogger. So um, there is several examples. Why, why those people, why, why they have contracts on their head? Because actually we are the living contradiction of that theory that wants to expl explain to us that if you criticize Islam, then it means you are Islamophobic, then it means you are racist. Uh, let's see what I have more and I continue. So that was the issue I told you about. Um, these are the covers of the two uh, books and the two volumes. Yeah, that was the next step. Um, so we are the living contradiction of that. Tell me just why, as a white person, European person, white, 
If you criticize Christianism, you are not called a Christianophobe, you are called an anti-clerical, but as a Muslim born, if you criticize Islam, you are uh, a traitor or a house Arab or um, Islamophobic. So Islamophobic, if that, that means being racist, first of all, I have to say Islam is not a race. It has never been a race. Uh, Christianism is not a race and Islam is not also. So I don't know what does the Muslim race mean. Um, racism for me is the fact to suppose that someone, because he belongs to a culture, deprive him of his right or estimate, uh, had the, have put a cliche on him and think that he will automatically think and act like, like that because he is from this part of the world. While actually those who, uh, who cry about Islamophobia, they say exactly that. I was born in a Muslim country, but I am totally atheist. I know Islam, my family is Muslim, etc., but I am atheist. I am not, I am not uh, condemned to be Muslim because I was born in a Muslim um, environment. Um, before to talk about Islamophobia, I, I, I just want to, um, to talk about um, drawing, depicting Muhammad. Um, what does the Sharia say? Actually, I studied Quran, uh, I searched on it, I found no single sentence forbidding, banning to draw the Prophet or to draw anyone else. But in the Sunni Islam, there is a tradition saying that you can't depict the Prophet. Uh, in the Shia Islam, you can depict him. As you can see, you can, say, um, you can see here, this is Muhammad with Jesus Christ. And I think this is a Persian uh, tradition uh, of uh, depicting, making, um, uh, car not cartoons, making um, representations of uh, the Prophet. So the Shia, they have no problem with depicting him. The Sunnah, what do they say? The four uh, low schools in the Sunni Islam, the Maliki, the Hanbali, the Shafi'i, and the Hanafi, the interpretations of Islam say that, uh, okay, they are very clear on with that. If you insult, between brackets, the Prophet, you have to be killed without be given the opportunity to redemption. Knowing that, I quote them, huh? knowing that insulting him or mocking him is a very unclear and imprecise notion. For instance, I quote them, if you, see, if you say, his face is black, that means it is an insult, so you have to be killed. If you say his clothes are dirty, it is an insult, so you have to be killed. But we can say this is an interpretation, this is not an interpretation, this is compulsory, this is not compulsory. Actually, for me, uh, it doesn't matter, because this is a problem that has to be solved by the Muslim people, they can discuss about that. But we as journalists in Europe, uh, in France, we work under the French law. We don't work under the Sharia law. Uh, so in France, um, nothing uh, forbids what, uh, what they call blasphemy. The blasphemy is a right in France. And la laïcité, secularism, is the most important thing in the French constitution. So as a journalist, I am obliged to respect the French law, but not the Sharia law. So uh, why then don't they accept us to depict Muhammad? They say to be uh, offended by that. Actually, I don't know uh, what is, um, why they are offended by that, for instance, or by even by that. If you are offended, I, I understand the right of others to be offended, but actually if you are offended, you can walk away, switch off the television, or not buy Charlie Hebdo. Uh, it's, a, it's an option, I mean, you can not buy Charlie Hebdo. But at uh, no moment you have the right to uh, take your gun and just kill people because of your feeling of being offended. Uh, today, for instance, in the United States, there is a new notion 
called the safe space. It is very uh, something new. Everyone talks about safe space. What, what does this safe space mean? Safe, safe space means the right not to be offended. And actually, such a right doesn't exist in human rights. I know what is the right for free speech. I know that freedom is a right, but the right not to be offended, I've never heard about it. It doesn't exist. Actually, um, we have to understand something. Those who uh, uh, say Charlie Hebdo is an Islamophobic publication, First of all, I have to give them some mathematic uh, uh, figures. During the last 10 years, Charlie Hebdo published 523 covers. Among those 523 covers, only seven were about Islam. 19 were about Christianism. And all the others were about French politics, culture, sport, uh, uh, far uh, right uh, wing, anyway about anything. So they can't say that Charlie Hebdo is focused on Islam. Mathematically, it's a lie. It's wrong. Um, those who say Charlie Hebdo is Islamophobic because uh, he talks about Islam. Charlie Hebdo is a publication who talks about Islam. Personally, I consider that Islam today is uh, an ethnologic reality in France. It's a sociologic reality. Islam and what we can call the Muslim community, even if I don't understand what, I, what does the word community means, is a, a part of France. So as a French newspaper, we have to talk also about that. Today, we have events around the world about terrorism, etc. We are obliged as journalists to write about that. So if Islamophobia is the fact to have a phobia when we see what the terrorists do in Nigeria or in Iraq or what they do in Syria, I totally understand any person in this earth who will say, I feel a phobia towards what I am seeing. But if the fact to criticize Islam is Islamophobic, then why, as I told you, the fact to criticize another religion is not being Christianophobic or Judeophobic? Actually, those, the radicals among Muslims in the countries where they have the power, in the countries where Islam is a religion of state, they have legal tools uh, to shut the mouths of those who criticize the religion. See what happened to Raif Badawi. He was whipped in Saudi Arabia and it is totally legal there. In other countries, they can just jail you or just beat you somewhere and you cannot even shoot them. So they have legal tools. But those radical Muslims who live here in Europe and who live here because here we are in a secular society and they are using secularism here to exist as radicals and they try to explain to us that this radicalism is their culture and that we have to respect it. Actually here, they don't have any legal tool, any legal method to shut the mouths of those who criticize their religion. So they try to shut your mouth by saying, oh, you criticize my religion, I am offended, you are racist. And actually, I have to say that racism is exactly the contrary. As a Muslim-born person in an Arab country, I feel it is racist to tell me, we, white, we, we want equality between men and women, but we will understand that those people don't respect it. We will understand that they treat their, their women differently because they belong to another geography and because they don't deserve, uh, they are not capable of sharing the same universal values as us. They are condemned to be ruled by their own tradition and we, we have to respect that, otherwise we will be treated uh, as racists. For me, racism is exactly that. Racism is to say, because your name is Zineb, because your name is Mustafa, because your name is Ahmed, so you automatically think like that and you are condemned to be ruled by your tradition. This is exactly racism. So what I want to say today, Islamophobia, racism exists 
okay, racism exists in Europe and exists everywhere in the world, and we have to stand against it. But Islamophobia, for me, is an intellectual imposture that is uh, meant to be a tool to shut the mouths of those who criticize religion and actually think about the fact that many people who grew up in this re religion, who have seen their rights oppressed because of this religion, I remind that as a Moroccan woman in Morocco, I only inherit the half. I don't have the right to marry the man I choose, and I don't have the right to criticize this power exerted on me. So otherwise, it is Islamophobia. No, I'm sorry. I don't accept that, and I invite you to think about it. Thank you.